Are you guys ready for this? Come on board. Let's go. Look what this crew can do when they pull it all together. Wow, AJ Huds, look at Nuke. That was incredible. What a great opener. That Proud is awesome of you guys. Song. Thank Huds for that. And I think Lauren Glenn helped out a little bit on that one. But yeah, we are live. And today's subject is guys, stop pedestalizing women and pedestalize yourself. You can thank Mr. Paul Bauer, Come On Man Podcast, for giving me the inspiration to do this one after he broke X, formerly known as Twitter. Last week by Colin Scarjo amid. <laughs> I am joined today by the menace himself, Paul Bauer. Come on, man. Podcast. How you doing, brother? Oh, man. Living the dream, right, Thor? Right, man. We're always living the dream because we know the secret to living the dream, don't we, gentlemen on the dragon ship? Oh, yeah. Whoop. What is the secret right. to living the dream? Even Nightmares and dreams, too. So we're always living the effing dream here on the dragon ship. And I am also joined by Mike Steele out of Las Vegas. How you doing, buddy? Thank you, but it's not about me today. Let's give a round of applause for Paul Bauer's tweet hitting 18 million impressions. He's taking us all to dinner. We're all going to Chili's. Unbelievable. Get those Elon oh ducats. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're, going to, we're going to Chili's, taking us all. I, I'm actually curious to see if I do get those Elon ducats because it did get community notes. And so allegedly that's supposed to kill the monetization for that tweet. It's because you, we'll you, you, you monetize misogyny. I'll tell signed you what, up if, to be a community um, whatever watchdog, just so I can refute their that dumb crap. So I oh, signed it. Thank that. you, yeah. Thor. Thank you. Yeah. One of the beer, one of be our, community monitor. One of our beer club guys did the same thing. Uh, Omega Hashira signed up too, just so he could go back and go. <laughs> no, this is legit. She yeah. is a mid. Yeah. <laughs> and here's the thing: mids are are they make the world go round. That's just yeah. not the case at all. 
you know oh yeah it's kind of i mean it's kind of what we talked about in rule zero you know nuke was all on top of it it's like yeah that's how what that is what women are you know and it's like <laughs> we love mids and of course here on the dragon ship we could do savage math so we know how to make it work for us <laughs> three three still gonna put it out <laughs> mr glenn lawrence the producer how you doing today sir yeah, yeah. He's, he's muted. He's like, show yeah. starting. I'm going to go to use the yeah. John. Yeah, he's taking a massive dump. <laughs> yeah. He's going for FAP number two he's, already. He's, he's taking a Glenn Lawrence. Uh, yeah, well, a big we'll, one. We'll skip, over, we'll skip over Glenn and go right to the host, the man himself, the god amongst men, Thor. How are you doing, sir? Uh, I'm doing fantastic. I'm living the dream, just like Paul said, you know, for sure. Oh, yeah. I am so proud of all you guys here and everybody's up and coming i mean paul is making strides nuke is just launching into the stratosphere on the x twitter market along with paul and i see i even see mike on there i see guys this is fantastic i mean what is our motto here a rising oh, tide lifts all ships and we are that tide and that's why we invite everybody to join on you know i want to take a moment and just go ahead and hit the chat guys please like and subscribe Hit that uh, thumbs up because that's how we get noticed and we get our information out. Sure, we're just a bunch of talking heads that have fun conversations, but there is wisdom in our conversations from decades. There's well over hundreds of years sitting right here of experience in real life that you can you can glean information from. So subscribe to all of these guys. Go and subscribe to Jack. He's got that amazing European tone about himself and insight from the history of that amazing continent. And he's a power lifter. And then I've got Nuke right down there in Texas, nuclear Navy. You know, he's not stupid, you know. And then we've got AJ, same thing. Well, we all go stupid sometimes, especially around the moon, right? <laughs> on so, the timeline, yes. On the timeline, yes. Exactly. <laughs> right out there in Philly. We know he's an amazing uh, coach for dating and things like that. And he's, he did some amazing work for us. Uh, and he is a welcome Drakkar for sure. I've got Mike Steele. You know, one of our Dracars out of Las Vegas. Fantastic. Go join his YouTube. You'll you'll figure it out. We're broadcasting all of these uh, channels. Please go and like and subscribe and send some super chats, uh, chat. Uh, really, we appreciate it. We're going to try to get to valid questions and all that sort of stuff when we hit our topics. We're really open here, uh, and we appreciate our chat. I mean, I'm going to shout out to a few of you that are out there. I mean, we've got CG coming on. we got to... Um, if I can see clearly here, Wild Bill Kerr, welcome back, man. Good to see you in here today. Um, David Colt, Rafferty Berkeley. Oh, well, Raff, that, we know Raff, him. Raff. He's, he's uh, the wiener king of Fort Worth. The wiener king. I yeah. love it, man. Oh, I'm yeah. so he, glad to see him he's here. He's them wieners all over the place. Nurse oh, yeah. Chick, I hope that your package got uh, delivered properly uh, and uh, – there's there's no innuendo there. She, oh, I always I always deliver the package. You guys, <laughs> yeah, you guys know what's up. You guys know what's going on. Yeah, of course. You know that's fantastic. So I wanted to shout some of those folks out that had jumped into the chat, and uh, we got some new folks in there. Manin, uh, David Holt, of course, I mentioned him. But it's important the chat gets all engaged here, and they do, and it just continues on. And I appreciate that here on the Dragon Ship. I'm not up to much, but. Just taking care of business here at home while my crew is out there actually pulling on all the roars, all the all the oars, uh, making this ship go forward. So thank you, guys. That's enough from me today. Thank you, Thor. Huds, out of Philly, the friendly city. Out of Philly. City. How you doing? Not brother? too much going on. Not too much going on with me. Um, I uh, We had an earthquake yesterday, and that was interesting. Um, that the was last Thor. Time we, that was Thor. Yeah, it was it was Thor. <laughs> I thought it was Lizzo twerking. I dropped my hammer a couple times yesterday. Sorry, guys. <laughs> we actually all, talked about that good. last night on Vince's channel on Masculine Geek because he's in New Jersey. So yeah, hit, hit him too. Hey guys, yeah, did I, did I, can I miss something real quick, Huds? When you're done, pass it back to me. Sorry. Yeah, no, absolutely. No, it just it was it was wild because like back in 2017, like I didn't even feel that one, and I felt this one truly. Like I was like. What the heck? It was only like seven seconds, but I was like, what the heck is going on? And my chair that I'm on right now was starting to slide. Um, but yeah, not not major damage. It was only a 4.8. Um, but yeah, it was it was just interesting. So that's kind of what's going on in my life. I'll hand it back to you, Thor. 
Well, I'll try to keep the grip on my hammer and not drop that so much anymore. But I got I got to drop us down in, in order before we come back uh, to the other guys to uh, the first time uh, Viking invited on board the dragon ship to grab an oar. And that's based Oracle. I mean, this guy, he is like the debate master champion. Oh, <laughs> I've seen oh, some oh. of his stuff. So he definitely is the b- debate uh, moderator champion. Let's Are you a master Great debater? Moderator. <laughs> yeah. welcome on. welcome uh bo we appreciate you coming on board thank you thank you appreciate it Thor. can you tell us a little bit about yourself and then we'll get back to the other guys in the rotation i just proud to have you on board the ship today cool appreciate it yeah you know i uh, picked up youtube a while back put it down for a bit was trying to figure out what i wanted to do with it like what the actual purpose was other than my opinions conjecture and I figured that out a bit better. I don't know if I'm there. I don't know if anyone's truly there, but I have a pretty good idea now. So I'm just delving in. I've been hopping in a bunch of panels uh, recently, some with Glenn, and having a good time working on some kind of debate league or something to, uh, you know, get some better high-level discussions going than what seems to be plastered all over YouTube, which is mostly bullshit. <laughs> well, thank you for your presence. Uh, I think we've all seen that for quite a bit too. Back to thank you, you. Who's next in order? I believe Nuke is the next one in order. Hey guys, so uh, just want to say uh, I got a new post up on my Patreon about uh, pool season and how you can maximize opportunities to meet women during uh, during pool season. Um, so first first thing I say is I like, start cutting now, get get those abs, get get lose the weight, extra weight you got during the holidays. Um, you know, uh, get your fashion up. Don't be wearing those billabong board shorts that go down below your knees. You know, you are an adult now and stuff like that. So uh, I'm going to do a whole um, seminar on Patreon for that, too. So that's what I got coming down the line. And then shows Tuesdays and Thursdays at 7 p.m. on my channel. Uh, talk about red pill dating topics and all that stuff. So and guys, wrap it up, please. Wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> get yeah. a vasectomy in your 20s. Exactly. Not Get a vasectomy in your 20s. Anyone, That's how you become a high value man. Not in referencing the anyone in particular. No, siri. I'm referencing what? every man who <laughs> had a scare like this. So you know? I got a funny vasectomy story. If you Ooh. guys want to hear, I didn't know those existed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Apparently, um, wasn't me personally, but somebody I know, uh, family member, got a vasectomy a few years back and. I remember him talking to me. He's like, yo, you got to get it. You got to get it. It's so good. I got a great doctor. And at the time, I was kind of considering it. I was like, you know, this might not be a bad idea. So anyways, about a week later, I heard from somebody else through the grapevine that it was swollen, infected. He had to go to the doctor, emergency. He regretted ever doing it, all this shit. And at that moment, I was like, you know what? I think I'm good. (laughs) Go to Cappy's doctor. Or uh, Paul's doctor. Uh, don't go to my doctor. Uh, so, so I had one, guys. I had a, I had a vasectomy after four kids, and I got 13 grandkids now. Mm. So for myself, I do have one regret. I mean, it really opened up, and it was really nice. But in retrospect, I actually wish I would have pushed one more children. Mm. I think, honestly, once you're past three, it's all the same number, and, and you can do it right on in perpetuity. And looking around now, I think that would be – for me, I would prefer to have had more. Although, I have to say, shooting blanks and making it a fun stick is a good deal for your psychology. <laughs> mm. I, I I had mine after uh, it was after it was after Red Pill Chick. I was like, I was out there spinning plates and, you know, I had a few condoms break during that period. And I, yeah. I was like, oh, shit, like this is like I, you need to take this seriously, bro. And I, I I made the appointment and had it done. But for me, it was painful. It was a painful process. But was it was, it? yeah, it was. It, but it was um, it was worth it. You know, uh, I would do it. I would do it over again. But yeah, the way the guy did it, he just he didn't give me enough um, local yeah. anesthetic. And I felt I felt the the process the whole time. It was, it was fucking painful. Yeah. Mine were so little. It didn't really matter. So, <laughs> but have you guys heard of legacy? I have some, uh, uh, they do a lot of military guys where they store them in perpetuity. And it's really reasonable. It's like 25 to five grand for six locations for uh, 50, 10 or 15 years of the shot to save your seed guys. That's what I'm saying. It is possible. You know? Yeah. Yeah. 
Well, I have, I have, I've had two kids. I don't, I don't need any more. I mean, if you want to go that route young, there's lots there, you know. Mm -hmm. Hey, Pearl. Yeah, she Shout just jumped Pearl. in. Yeah. She had a great show yesterday with uh, with Andrew Tate, didn't she? Uh, I haven't seen it yet, but uh, I want, want to. to? I'm sorry, I, I haven't been able to keep up, but yeah, absolutely. So Pearl says, my mom said the same thing after three. It's all the same after that. We had 10. I actually agree. I've known plenty of folks like that. And those families, I, I don't know, they they. It's an interesting dynamic that I think is a good dynamic. And, you know, we've been BS'd for uh, a good 100 years, you know, on the population is too much. That's not the case. We've been slowly crashing for ever since the industrial age uh, as a species. And I don't want to get into it, but you can you can see that um, we're not we're not overpopulated at all. Oh, yeah. And. Jack Napier from across the pond. How you doing, brother? Can't complain. How are you guys doing? <laughs> doing great. Doing great. Love the Lego content I've been seeing out of you too. And the poke the pokey beef between you and Wine More Please is hilarious. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I mean, Wine More Please is known as one of the most savage moderators of the uh married red pill Reddit. And you he and I did he would block people if you thanked them, right? Or yeah that... oh man oh man he would he would rip you a new one for for every opportunity he had and he i had him on my show and it turns out that he used to be a um an enthusiastic card collector and all we did that show was just talk about trading cards and he's got his daughter into trading cards and shit like that so that was like one of the most how do i phrase that the most heartfelt shows i ever did just how genuine it was. He was so relaxed, whatever. Like I was expecting this like savage guy who didn't have time for shit, but he was so laid back, so relaxed. It was just amazing. And now every now and then he and I start a little beef on Twitter between Nito King and uh, what was it? Dragonite. Dragonite with the big girls. Oh, yeah. 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 That runway. tweet. Jesus Christ. That was just a throwaway tweet of mine. It was you made some, it on uh, Reddit. Yeah. I even, I even got on Reddit for it. It's like that just this girl with like way too big thighs where I said, no, oh, you know what? She's she's fat. And this is a psyops where they try to manipulate men into liking girls with no tits and way too big thighs. And I will not fall for it. And everybody lost their minds. Everybody <laughs> lost their minds. And I was cold. Uh, every insult you could think of on the Internet. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's been uh, an interesting week. Well, speaking of tits, Glenn Lawrence. Hey guys, you guys get to see the new edition, like special edition. You know, um, Scarlett Johansson. She had a re response, like an interview. She said, "Paul Bauer got rejected, so that's why he calls me a mid." Like that was the rebuttal. You know, I mean, I don't know about you guys, like, but I kind of want to read that article now. That was her rebuttal, huh? Mids are yeah. magnificent. Yeah, like I mean, you know. Just Wait, saying. did she actually respond? No, dude, come on. Okay. <laughs> no, like, wow, Huds. Wow. <laughs> hey, <And the> spirit <laughs> goes to Huds today. A little bit of naivete. He's blonde. Of... He's blonde. Give the guy a... no, don't give him a break. Just put him in timeout. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, fellas? Don't do that. Not much, man. So uh you guys are ready. We're gonna to get into this topic. Yeah, yeah, we can get into this topic. Why should you pedestalize yourself and not the women? AJ, stop right there. Can you get close to the mic or boost yeah. that? Yeah, is, is this better? Yeah, yeah, that's better. Yeah, yeah you got to right, get sorry. up on it because the level's real low. Yeah, yeah. You got to uh, talk into it like a harmonica. Yeah, use your man voice. You got to talk into it like never mind. Uh, I'll <laughs> leave that one alone. Sorry about that, guys. Is, is this voice. better? All right. Yeah, and for God's sake, stay in the middle of the fucking frame. <laughs> Noted. <laughs> I know I was making your TikTok. Your man What's up, Mariner? He has to up my TikToks yesterday. God damn it. Come on, sailor. <laughs> He's a submariner. He's supposed to be covert and kind of, you know, yeah. be out of frame. Sneaky. <laughs> so, sounds better. It's a, it's a silent service for a reason, guys. That's why it's called SS. <laughs> so why are we talking about pedestalizing yourself and not the women? Because you see stuff, the emotional response that you got out of Paul's post, a lot of Nuke's posts, like he was going, Nuke was going savage on X last week, just freaking knocking every girl down a peg. <laughs> Jack Napier's post about the chick. And you watch how guys simp for these women. 
And there's a saying that I talked about yesterday on Paul's show, and it's with uh, it's from Rolo Tomasi. Treat her like a celebrity, she's going to treat you like a fan. So why not treat yourself like a celebrity and watch her react to it? So i open it up to the panel. You guys got any thoughts on this? Well, I mean, I think it starts off with, like, where's, when you put her on a pedestal, you are putting her as your mental point of origin by default. You know, um, whether you intend to or not, who you are basically who you are serving is who worldview that you're going to be filtering things from so you'll be making decisions on oh is this going to please her is she going to be happy with this rather than how does this benefit me you know does it benefit my end game does it benefit my goal my desired outcome and you know when you do that you are telling her that she's more important than you that you, who you are doesn't matter. If she hurts your feelings, it's not that big of a deal because you are more important. And you're setting yourself up for failure. You may think you're doing the nice thing, the nice honorable thing, and, you know, no. You're basically, you know, cutting your nuts off and you're telling her that you're not worth it. You're not worth respecting is what you're saying. So I got a question to clarify this this statement about pedestalizing. Um, so... Are we talking about when we're just dating and we just start out? Are we talking when you get into that spot where she's asking you, where do we stand? Are we talking about long-term relationship? Because in my mind, I would pose the argument when you're dating, you have to express an interest. And that could come off a little bit as a, as a, you know, elevating her in your mind and showing an interest. And some guys take that too far. Um, but in my mind, I'm thinking once we get in that spot where we want a more permanent girlfriend that's when we start down that road and it leads to one itis am i wrong there did i miss that i think well, i think even when you're even when you're dating it's not a good okay. mentality to have um, i see guys that have it that's why i brought it up yeah yeah when you're i mean i i don't think it's ever a good idea to pedestalize your girl even if, if even if you mm -hmm. are in an exclusive relationship and i and i think really what it comes down to is women's hypergamous nature and them wanting to date yep. a guy that they perceive as better than them. And if you are putting her on a pedestal up above you, she has no chance, no yep. choice but to look down on you. And, it, you know, she might think it's cute or whatever in the right. beginning, but eventually long term, that's going to kill the relationship. When she's like, wait a second, why is this guy fawning over me? Like, I can do no wrong. Oh, like, there's true. something there's something up with this. And, oh, uh, yeah. and she starts realizing very quickly that uh, you think that, she's better than you and and now she's gonna start looking for someone that that doesn't think that way you know? yeah i totally saw that with uh the npc bikini competitors i was training a few years back and some of them were very beautiful and you'd have really studly looking guys and by the second or even the first date they'd show up with a dozen roses box of chocolates and by the second date where are we you know i'd really like to take this serious and so that to me that actually was a common issue with those gals they did not like that one little bit or they tolerate it and use it to their advantage. So it would like trigger their icks a little bit. They're like, it would, but some of those girls would carry it on and then it'd be a nasty mess. You know, it's, well, it's, it's one of those things where, just, where women really don't know what they want either, you know, because they'll say, you yeah, know, I want a guy that does it. I want, I was at the bar the other night with Nurse Chick. This was uh, two weeks ago. And we're at the bar and I overhear these, these, uh, these old bats talking. And they're talking about how the, uh, the one lady was like, well, my daughter needs a, bo a guy that puts her on a pedestal. And I just was looking at her like, are you fucking retarded? <laughs> and yeah. she's like, she looks over me. You disagree. And I go, no, I mean, like, think about it. You know, like she might think she wants that. But as soon as a guy starts doing that, she's going to get the ick and she's not going to know why, you know, and that's, and that's where most women are, where they, they think they want that. And then when a guy actually does that, they're like, I don't know what it is about this guy, but he, he seems too needy. Uh, you know, he wants my attention all the time. He's pushing for relationship. I don't get this. It's because it goes against their evolutionary psychology. Well, it's, it's a dark part of understanding women is that a woman, when you start treating her well, she's going to be like, why is he treating me so well? I'm a piece of shit. Like a lot of women know what, like if you, once you get to know women, you realize like they're, they're human beings, they're bad. They're, 
you know, they're not all great and perfect. A lot of them are bad or, or just regular people with regular jobs and regular lives. So he starts like, have you guys ever met somebody that started treating you well for no reason? You you were like, hmm, what's going on here? Like, right. Yep. Yeah. What do you want? Yeah. What's yeah. ulterior yeah. motives here? Right. Except that now women have the biological imperative to 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 drain your resources. Yeah. Um, at, at will because you're literally serving them on a platter. What is she? What is she supposed to do? Right. What if what if someone you had a weird neighbor that was like, hey dude, let hey I got you this or I got you that or I did this. You'd be like, okay, but I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna start taking it because it doesn't bother you that I'm taking stuff from you, you know. So think about that and, and realize when when uh when a girl knows that she's not a good person, and most of them know, um, and you think she's a good person worthy of being pedestalized, she's gonna start wondering, okay, he's wrong about this. What else is he wrong about? Yep, you know? it's a giant so, shit test. Yeah. If, if if you're not able to like pick up on their red flags and they know that they have tons of red flags. <laughs> They're like, yo, I'm going to go for the ride with this guy. Yeah, you know, I'm just going to capitalize. Like, they're not going to yeah. look out for your best interest. Yeah, it's like, that's why when I roast chicks, they keep coming back and keep, you know, because they they know that they suck. <laughs> and they know. Well, no, it's more like you're pulling the girl's pigtail in school and you're running around playing her third recess. That's why you're they keep her attention. coming back. They like your attention. Do you guys notice guys that do this on the regular or subtly? I, I think there's a big possessiveness in them. I see them as being quite possessive. I do all this as part of that um, um, contract. Um, covert, covert contract, contract yeah. Contract that I do all this for you. I possess you in a bit. That's got to be a little creepy for the gals, too, because they have this expectation in return. Mm -hmm. Well, it's part of the nice guy model. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. you know, it's like, look, I put you up here. I, I did this for you. Look at all the things that I did for uh, you. Oh, yeah. And now, now you got now you're gonna guilt them, yep. you know. And now you think that you're entitled to something. You're entitled to nothing. So one thing yeah. I'd like to point out: I don't think that most men who we might view as pedestalizing women are actually cognizant that they're doing it. They're yeah. probably thinking yeah. of themselves as I'm being nice, I'm being a good guy, whatever they want to put it as. And also, I'd like to point out that we have a real problem with men pedestalizing other men as well. And I realize yeah. all of you in here, I mean, I don't know all of you, but I know a few of you um, run channels or lead groups. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm just saying that there's this very bad mentality in society where we need a God. <laughs> and it's not going to be God, God. It's going to be in the form of a man or woman in this case, whereas it's a superficial value, right? She's so hot or he's so rich and cool and I want to be like that. So I think the pedestalization is a bit broader than just men and women. Yeah, that's no, that's a really good point. We have and a saying. We have a saying. Don't be gay for your gurus. Well, men are missing mentors. That's a big part of it. We don't have the same mentorship for young men that we had just even 45 years ago. And so there is that need. And the next best thing is to man worship. Basically, you're here. Yeah. We did an episode on that. Was it last week? Yeah, it was last meet your heroes. Week. Yeah. yeah, so a week before cool. last, yeah. that was awesome. Yeah, so and Thor, I'd like to. Oh, I'm sorry, go on. Oh, uh, no, I was just, I was just to mention real quick like, uh, like Ryan Stone, shout out to him, by the way, uh, pointed this out. You know, I like Ryan Stone, I like Andrew, T Andrew Tate as much as anyone can, and I really like Justin Waller. But yeah. Ryan had a really good point when he was posted an uh, a Justin Waller tweet, and then he was like, Look at all the gay simping in the comments, and it's just men fawning over justin waller like it was mm. unreal yeah i know those I, I think I the like issue all. the issue is that it comes from um a, a place of weakness and not like loving yourself so you're trying to find that fulfillment through somebody else loving really yourself or respecting down. yourself i think there's a difference you could love yourself and you know still do that i think it's a lack of respect for yourself that's why you end up pedestalizing because Both, either you, the man you or the you woman pedestalize, you pedestalize somebody that you then admire makes you that look you, good that you admire that you look up to that you think is better than you it has mm -hmm. nothing to do with love it has to do with the respect or admiring admiration you know, the, the interesting thing about that now is that with social media everybody like we're seeing a lot of people's true colors and the, the things they do behind the scenes like remember when michael vick got caught with the dog stuff oh yeah mm. a lot oh, of people yeah. were like michael vick's awesome he's he's dopest football player and then 
Just wouldn't let him watch my dog. Yeah, just wouldn't let him. And you, <laughs> it, it, it happens like right now is a very, I don't know if you guys noticed it, right now is a very interesting interesting time in history where so being a celebrity right now, you your image has to be absolutely clean cut. Lawless. Right? Because like, um, what's his name? The guy uh, the guy from wrestling. Um, the woo Vince guy. His name, uh, Talking about Vince McMahon? Ric Flair? Ric Flair. Yeah. Right, Flair. you think Ric Flair could exist in a, in a time like this? No, oh, no. no, he would get oh, canceled. He got, he got he got canceled on AEW because uh, man, it was maybe two months ago. He get, he cut a promo, and it was one of his classic promos from like the eighties, where he said, "All right, ladies, eighteen to thirty-five, I'll be I'll be at this hotel, you know, whatever, and uh, make sure no boyfriends, no STDs, what and like all this kind of stuff." <laughs> and they took him off air. For a while because they thought it was offensive to young women you know and it was like yeah. it's fucking rick flair like <laughs> yeah and, and that's the thing like now are, are now people like obviously there's extreme cases where like that's not a big deal because i mean 1835 is where women are their hottest right but now we're seeing where our heroes that we even grew up grew up with are starting like really bad things are starting to happen to them or their their past is catching up I mean, look at Bill Cosby. Look at Diddy. Dan. Yeah, Diddy. Look at Dan Schneider with Nickelodeon. He was touching those poor oh kids God. on the Nickelodeon set. Uh, dude, we knew about that for years. We I did. Just, I, 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 I never. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know why it took so long for them to actually make a big deal out of it. Yeah, and to save and to save guys' pain is to stop looking up to people that you don't know, right? Because you don't like. You may think that some person is amazing and great. And all that, or a good person, or chaste, or moral, or whatever your version of what you look up to and what you expect out of someone that you look up to. And then what's going to come out eventually is that, hey, this guy's either very, very stupid, fake, their credentials are fake, um, all that stuff. And the best thing to do is like look at these people as people, as resources. Like just look at them in like a book. Like you check out, I'm like, okay, this guy knows a lot about this. Cool, thanks. And then put it back. So, yeah. Awesome. Hey, real quick, so we that, got a couple super chats. If anyone wants to, if Mike wants to go ahead, yeah, and read they, those. Hey, you're gonna do the super chats and then hit nuke, and then I want to announce something quick. All right. Siege D with the dollar ninety nine super chat. Give him a, <laughs> let's give him a war horn here. Okay, sorry. Oh. Thank you very much for the support. When will Phil Foster return to the Dragon Ship? Uh, Phil Foster has a standing open invitation to the Dragon Ship. Uh, he's running multiple companies. He's a very busy guy, but uh, he might uh, show up eventually here. And uh, Rafferty Berkey with the $5 Super Chat. Thank you very much for your support. Christopher Walken says, attention is like candy a little bit. It was amazing, but too much makes us sick. Throw up everywhere. <laughs> Need more cowbell. <laughs> oh, we got one more here. He's um, the lion. He's the up, king dude. of the jungle. <laughs> <laughs> Christian Christianity unplugged with the $2 super chat. And today, Trump says, fellas, keep up the good work, fellas. All of you, very fine fellas on all sides. Good work, all of you. The best work. Thank you. Very good. Thank you guys for those super chats. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Be sure and subscribe. Uh, we love it. We love to hear Mike Steele's amazing voice. That just shocks its way right out through the internet and brings your attention right back to all our channels. Fantastic, Mike. So I got a little bit of pushback for Mike. Um, I think it was Mike. You said that uh, you like Andrew Tate pretty much as much as a as someone could, right? Yeah. Could that not be a little bit of pedestalization in there? Because I would argue many men are pedestalizing him. I'm I'm definitely not trying to copy him now sometimes i'll put on the bathrobe and the slippers and the shades and i'll you know and i'll i'll kind of talk like this for a little bit and ask you what color your bugatti is and ultimately it doesn't matter 
you know, just for fun, <laughs> right? But I don't. I do. I want to be rich. Yes. Do I want a bunch of gals and a bunch of cars? Yes. But we all see what will happen if you try to copy Andrew Tate. If you try to live your life like him, you know, you fly too close to the sun, the wax on your wings is going to melt. So I can like him and I can laugh at him and watch him and, and listen to uh, some of his rumble rants and emergency meetings and stuff. I'm actually a bigger fan of Tristan, but, uh, but I'm not, you're not going to see me out here like mimicking him genuinely. Or, or really mimicking any of my of my coaches or friends genuinely. But I, I think the big question here becomes like, what's wrong with looking up to somebody? They, I don't view that as pedis, pedestalizing. Like, yeah. you're allowed to look up I mean, to people and admire in, them. In, re, in regards, I'll, to what I'll tell I you said. what's. Tr- I'll tell you what's wrong. Um, so in your twenties, you're very naive, and people are con- like, there's a war for your mind in your twenties. Yep, and people want to. To recruit you for their ideology the way they think their religion whatever version of hey come be on my side right so what happens is you look up to people and you you don't know you don't even know that you don't know what you're doing right mm-hmm. you look up to people you're just like i like lebron james right and you're like cool lebron james you know he, he is an athlete but like is he a, is he the kind of person you want to be out off the court right like uh maybe and then the blm stuff happened and then you know he said a lot of weird stuff a lot of anti-america stuff right and it's just like oh the person i look up to doesn't like this country that much even though this country gave him the ability or the opportunity to be a worldwide yep. basketball star right so as you go older you have to start thinking um maybe the people i look up to maybe i should be meeting them like people that i know personally because you're going to get your heart broken over and over and over. Look, and I think the best example of this is Donald Trump, right? Where you had people that went rushed on January 6th to go because they thought, oh, Trump is our leader and he's going to, you know, he supports this. And then now those people are going to jail. People that we have interacted with personally are going to jail because they thought, hey, this guy that I look up to and is the king of America, he's going to release me if I, you know, I'm, I'm on the right side of history. You know, they ended up doing something stupid. And these are people that are 35, 40 years old with kids, you know, with a lot to lose in life, risking their lives because they mm-hmm. wanted to impress or wanted to show their support for a leader or someone that they look up to. Right. And that see that it, it gets really bad when you oh. when they appeal to you, when when they when you feel like they they share your experience or they understand your problems, you know, it's like the. Um, um, in the Bible, there's like uh, there's a there's a there's a guy named Absalom. He's one of King David's sons, mm-hmm. and he would um, stand at the like the wall whenever you know people are coming in to see the king for the king to decide their you know uh, disputes, right? And for the ones that did, the king didn't you know show favor to, he's like you know if I was your king, I would I would I would help you. I understand what you're going through. And he would appeal to them. And what he was trying to do, he was trying to turn the people against King David so he could, you know, overthrow him. And he tried to do that and he didn't succeed. But that's what, you know, a lot of these gurus or your what you end up doing is like you like these idols end up appealing to you because you think that they understand you. And then you end up. Only this person understands. I'm only going to listen to this, you know, creator. Or I'm only going to listen to this star or whatever because they get me. But really, you don't know them. You you only know what they allow you to see. And instead of just admiring them for what they do, like LeBron James, I don't look for LeBron James for any life choices in life. LeBron James, if I wanted to learn how to do a crossover and then a, a good fadeaway, I'll hit up LeBron. All right. Well, well, look at look at even his relationship with his son. He's essentially like forcing his son. See, I don't even know that much about him. I just know LeBron plays basketball because that's where I keep him. He's in basketball. He is no. He. I don't take him outside of anything. Like I could even listen. Like okay, R. Kelly, great singer, great voice. You know, made some great songs. Not gonna be trying to mirror my life after him. You know, but could give him credit for having a great voice. You know, it's just keeping what people tend to do is they take the person outside of that space that they're in and they try to fit them in everywhere else. And in doing so, that's the problem. That's the problem with when you start admiring people too much. 
Okay, let's get back to BO. No, it's not pedestalization for someone like Mike Steele. Let me explain. For when a man acquires, understands his own identity, he can admire, have uh, mentors, and he can even be involved with these people. But what we have is we have young men that act like fan boys. That's the delineation for mm -hmm. a pedestalizer. Hey, this guy is anything. I'm molding my entire life. I'm selling all of my goods. I'm going to live on the monastery with him. That's how man, men express it. And I explain this. There's a book out there, and you can see it on the screen now. It talks <laughs> about identity, and this is how you protect yourself. So this is why the topic today was so important with pedestalize yourself. And part of that is learning what your identity is and having it strong enough that you can move in and out of these circles of famous people, admired people, and you're not even an equal. In many ways, you're a superior because you recognize their value and they recognize your value. Talk about the Tates, all of those folks, the folks that I've met in real life and become close friends with, it's not a superior or a subordinate thing. It is close to being as equal as you can. You start off on equal footing, but then you know power recognizes power. And the reason that works so well is because I pedestalize myself to the point where my identity is secure. That's very attractive even to men. And that's why women go to it. I'm going to give you a quote that comes right out of the book, you know, just to uh, kind of give you the idea of why pedestalization should probably be looked at as uh, refining and defining a congruent identity in yourself. Here's a quote. To be yourself in a world that is constantly trying to make you something else is the greatest accomplishment in life. Ralph Waldo Emerson. Mm. So, mm. you know, if you go in here and you look at the identity stuff, I'll go through the Jungian identity types and you can see in there why people flip flop and they're not really living for themselves. They're living through somebody else. Everybody, anybody ever see parents that live proximally through their children? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is yeah. how you can define when somebody is pedestalizing himself. Realize when you're pedestalizing a woman, you're actually living through her. Mm -hmm. Yep. Her existence, how possessive that is, and how hollow it is for your identity. So I would say when you look at a guy and you want to see if he's pedestalizing, it shouldn't take you too much longer to see what he's saying about that person and how he lives his life to determine whether he is or isn't. That was kind of my answer. Thank you guys for letting me jump in there. And this is oh, the yeah, final no, no thing I'll say on this. I'll, I'll make this real quick. Is there's a difference between – so we're like a glass, right? I'm like a glass. And – instead of filling the glass with water from other people, the water comes from within. I don't I don't take water from Andrew Tate or Rolo Tomasi to fill my glass. No, the water needs to be all me. But if I want a pinch of lemon from Andrew Tate flavoring, I can throw that in there. Oh, a little bit of lime flavoring from Rolo Tomasi, throw that in there. That's the difference. Yes, yeah, so that's like a that great, right Mike. There. I love the way you just said that. That's an awesome fantastic. analogy. And, and look, I'm not trying to get caught up on nuances. There's no gotcha here. I save that for the ratchet panels. Um, <laughs> with, no worries, man. We appreciate you, by the way. Don't worry. Yeah. So Name with that countries. said, here's here's my real question. And maybe it's a matter of wording. I'm not denying how you feel. I'm just saying that this is how it comes off to me. Where's the delineation between pedestalizing and I like this man as much as a man could who I've never even met before. And I'm assuming there that you haven't met him. You don't know him. Not that that would be a huge difference, right? This isn't somebody you've known for 20 years, right? You've been friends and this type of thing. And I, I'll let you respond right after. So if somebody were to ask me, what do I think about him? And you and I may have similar feelings. I, I would say, look, I found a lot of his content pretty funny. I think that he has um, been a source of, you know, maybe some deeper thought to people in certain contexts. I also think that he's probably not somebody but i don't know but not somebody i would actually want my sons to model after when it comes to the superficials i'm not saying the money and success and bugattis and all that shit the social media attention i don't know if that's a good thing but um i'm not saying those are bad i'm not saying they aren't things to strive for but when i say i like someone i really don't even say that right i have two two and a half friends people i consider friends i like them i've also known them 15, 20 years. Do you see what How I do mean? you have a half a friend? <laughs> well, I understand what B.O. is saying. No, no, no it's a midget. Right? He let's has let, a midget let, friend. Let me Come use on. an example I... <laughs> here. The, the names you talk about. So you know I've met. And so some of them are very close to me. Uh, um, 
not necessarily Andrew. I've just spoken with him, but the Tristans, all that sort of stuff. So I have a different perspective on that. And I can understand why someone's just seeing social media. That's not, you could pedestalize that. But if you're raising sons, you should be the guy that they're mentoring and pedestalizing. If you're going to pedestalize, I don't want my sons idolizing me. I want them to come up and surpass me. So it's, it's kind of, you know, if I find that they're looking at these guys, we're going to glean with coaching and mentoring the, the top stuff that's going to help them acquire what they want to achieve in life. And sometimes I'll disagree with that, but if that's where they're going as a father, I'm going to help them get there. Can so, we say, can we say Thor that you should, uh, don't take your heroes seriously. Like well, you, can, you can have people you want to model off, but don't take them seriously. Like, yeah, yeah, we talked about that last time. If you take them to, it, you could you could idolize them like gods. Isn't this the problem with religion? You know, and they're just men. Yeah, like you could say Andrew Tate. You know, like you you if Andrew Tate walked into a room you were in, you'd get the celebrity kind of like you, you'd be shocked. You'd be like, whoa, what do I do? It's a celebrity here, right? But yeah. at the same time, you could look at him and be like, this guy's hilarious. He's a clown, but he's yeah. funny and I like him. He's likable. Like he's a likable guy. Like if if it wasn't for his celebrity status, he'd probably be a funny guy to have around, right? Um Yeah, um, a lot of people do observe it like that but, for sure. But a lot of a lot of where this stems from, this whole uh putting guys on pedestals above you that you don't know, is I think it's just the lack of men being the man in the arena, like that Teddy Roosevelt speech. Where basically you see a guy that is doing something and because you lack the belief that you can do it yourself, you tend to just be like, well, I can't do it, but he will. So let's support mm -hmm. him and what he's doing. For example, you have guys that are probably good with women or good with business or good with whatever and or even good at podcasting, all that stuff. And you look at that and you're like, man, those guys are amazing. But like, dude, have you tried to do any of those things? Have you tried to talk to a girl? It's not it's not something that you need to that you have to be a god to do. Yeah. You know, no, no, I, 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 it's just, I can see Bo's point in question, that guys. guys will guys guys that are a bit needy will grab for things at a distance and really absorb onto it because it's very much easier. So I really do understand where Bo's going with it. I um, think that I, Bro, I was going to say I think the the guys that tend to pedestalize, you know, their gurus, are the same guys that pedestalize their women. I think it's a trait yeah. that, that, that it's, yeah. it's it's it just mirrors nice it just mirrors it. The, the guys that the same guys that are going to put the woman up there are going to have a guru that they oh, worship. Yeah. So how do we break it? Down? How do we break it? I got a question. The problem is it them it you know an issue with themselves. It's not the women. It's not the guru. It's the individual yep. not having the respect and value of themselves enough and think that these individuals are greater than them. You it's know, exactly so, it's exactly what Thor said. It's identity. Yeah. Until yeah. you have identity, you're going to be victim to this. Yep. Well, I think it's just competence. Honestly, I think that, hey, this guy can do something that like, for example, when you play piano, people think you're a freaking magician. They yep. think you're like, you're like, holy crap, dude, that's impossible. And then I tell them, like, go home. If you have a piano, go home and learn Mary Had a Little Lamb. In three months, you'll be playing and people will think you're a magician. Because you can play a couple, like one or two classical songs, yeah. right? They already think I'm a magician. I just yeah. say, go, go, gadget, dick. Yeah, and then they people get out of this head, like, wait, you may, you, you don't have to pedestalize people because you are able, as long as you have the desire to, to do things that they can do. Obviously, there's some like I won't be able to do a 360 behind the back dunk, you know, I won't be able to do that, right? But there are things that you can look at people and be like, how does he do it, right? And it's just like, dude, he did it because he spent, he played piano for three months or dance also, or is it, he podcasted for a year or whatever. And you're just making, you're, you're coping by worshiping this guy because if you worship him, it gives you the excuse not to try because he's just so special and awesome, right? It's it's just, you're not the man in the arena. Become the man in the arena and yes. these, these gods that you have will slowly come back down to your level. Right? I, I, I got a question real fast. Back to the original topic and from yesterday's show. Paul, tell us how you've interacted with some of these WWE female celebrities they've ran into. Oh yeah. Uh, like they're, they're just normal people. Um, <laughs> I, that's, that's how I, uh, how I treat, I treat uh, when it comes to women, I treat them all the same, you know? Um, if they've done something that I admire, I mean, yeah, I'm going to say, Hey, you know, that thing that he does is pretty cool or whatever, but I'm not going to be like, Oh, you're so fucking beautiful. 
You're you not. Know? You're not simping over them, is what you're saying. You're not buying no. their bath water. You're not buying their bath water, are you? No, <laughs> like. So the last time I was in Vegas, uh, Nurse Chick and I we were there for for Hard to Kill, which was a TNA event, and she and I she and I were outside waiting for our Uber, and I looked over, and the uh, the TNA women's champ was just chilling there waiting for her cab, and I was like, oh hey, look, let's uh, let's go over and talk to her. So uh, me and Nurse Chick walked over there, and I was just like, hey, you did it great great job tonight you know well done and stuff and, and, and when i walked up on this chick too she had a fucking like bloody nose oh, shit. <laughs> she turns around and, and her nose is is stuffed with with uh toilet paper and i was like oh shit did you uh you took a bad bump and she's like oh yeah yeah i'll be all right though and it was like oh okay cool well good job tonight did you call but, her a walrus <laughs> a, a walrus no i yeah. didn't no no. Oh, okay. Oh, shit. I don't immediately start out with the negs, you know, like this. If... <laughs> <laughs> but no, nah, I mean, just treat them like normal people. One thing I've learned about in, you know, just in the men's podcast space is, you know, a lot of us, um, you know, we start off reading the books and stuff like that. Like Rolo's a good example of that. Rolo's got five books. Uh, he's got a lot of guys that I would say pedestalized him. And when you find out, you just you reach out and, and talk to him. Like they're, they're normal people. And then backstage, you find out they're just like you. you just know. as effed up as you. Just as <laughs> fucked up. Yeah. You know, what? I, I want to point out. Like, is you guys think pedestalization could be a problem of single mothers? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Think about oh, that. Yeah. Mom, mom yeah. is a hero. Mom did everything. You know, oh, she was Mother's both mom and dad. Yeah. Well, but I want to, I want to point out like there's a, there's a, a difference between pedestalizing and understanding that they're the weaker vessel. You know, like, I, I think there's a difference there, you know, where you're like, or when you're more patient or understanding with them, like, okay, they're the, they're the, what, the oldest teenager, the maturest teenager in the room. So you got to give them a little grace. And that's not necessarily pedestalizing them because, yeah, you may be approaching someone else differently, but, you know, this is who, her. And then who she is to you, you're not necessarily pedestalizing her. You're just approaching it differently. And I think that's not the same. And I think that needs to be, a, you know, separated because you could be correcting your woman or addressing your woman differently than you would somebody else. And they'd be like, oh, you're just scared of her or you're pedestalizing her. So you're just not, you know, giving it to her straight. I think there's a difference there. I think uh, as uh, when men are growing up, um, they when you like when you hang out with when you're when your dad is alone in the house with just you your dad says don't break anything do your homework and uh leave me alone let's just you know and the house is quiet you're doing what you need to do dad just checks in like hey you all right he's like yeah but when mom is angry or mom is at the house you everyone is constantly trying to make her happy because they want to they think that if i if mom is bitching and angry if we just keep mm. giving her what she wants she'll stop because we just want peace again right and that's mm. how men grow up because like, dude, like, it, fathers are just like, as long as he's doing what he's supposed to do, I don't care. Like, he can go to another country as long as he's home by dinner. I don't care. Well, moms are like, I <laughs> uh, had a bad day at work, and I'm going to make it everyone's problem. Because, you know, that's sometimes how that's how women are. So they end up having, they end up growing up thinking that they have to, in order to keep the peace and do and make mommy happy, they have to make women comfortable and, and give them whatever they want. Right. And that's a form of pedestalization, too. It starts in the home when you're young. Here's an interesting way of, of thinking about it. We we pedest, uh, pedestalize our mothers in households where the mother may have more authority than the man, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because we can't make we can't make her mad. Right. And I never I never thought about that until like right now. Like if you get if mom is in control of a lot, and you get on her good good graces, then boom like you're going to have a better situation. And so, yeah, maybe it does it all stems from childhood. Damn. I, I just haven't thought about this before. And it's like kind of blowing my mind. Yeah. It's... Now it's fucking with you. And now you need yeah. to go see a uh, counselor. Yeah. Well, it's like, you know, it's like <laughs> the thing. If mommy ain't happy, nobody's happy. Right. right. And that's why it's important not to be a, one of the ways you can de pedestalize women is not be afraid of her emotions. She wants to cry. Let her cry. Let Great. It, let it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cry. Yeah. Uh, on the whole, uh, we don't have enough male mentors. That's come up a couple of times. I would argue we have far too many male mentors. We don't have enough men mentors. 
meaning that we have plenty of weak men or males, whatever, who are mentoring, whether directly or indirectly. Well, mentoring for what? The, mentoring for what? Well, I mean, I need a mentor at work. I need a mentor for doing this podcast stuff. So I'm going to teach me the ropes. Are we talking about like life advice? Well, it came up generally. I'm talking about as generally as it came up. The general sense was we have a lack of male mentorship. And I'm just arguing that we have plenty of male mentorship. The quality is not so good. But oh, yeah. there is plenty of mentorship out there. And I think that bringing back into style, I don't know if that's really the term, but being a good man rather than being a flashy man or a rich man, and I'm not saying that money doesn't matter, that resources don't matter, but I'm saying that our society, our men are too concentrated on these superficials leading to the broken family. I mean, inevitably. I'm not saying that's the only part, but that's part of it leading to the single mothers, because where did they come from? I mean, I know this is getting bigger picture now, but I'm just talking about uh, for every single mother out there is a man who enabled it or a system of men, right? Enforcing some of the bad laws we have on the books, family court, divorce court, etc. And I'm not saying that women are blameless. I'm just looking at the root cause and problem, weakness in society, the weakness of men. Oh, absolutely. There's cultural Marxism that's invaded every space. That's the cause. I agree 100. percent But, but However, you crying over spilled milk doesn't help us here. Well, you can't like when this it just helps us understand where we started. My mentorship, like first off, I don't think any man needs a guy to give him their morals for them, right? If that because when we talk about mentorship, there's the whole hey, I'm going to become a power lineman. I need somebody to walk me through and and teach me and you know like be an apprentice, right? That's mentorship. Or, hey, I want to do this skill or I want to apply for this job. I'm going to be someone's mentor. Or I'm going to learn how to play an instrument. I need a mentor, right? right? But in terms of morality, I think that should be up to the individual. We should never tell a man. Like, you know how unfair it would be for me to have my fun in my 20s? And then a guy looks up to me. Hey, man, I'm in my 20s. I don't know what to do. And I'm like, be like me how I am right now. Like, I have, I've learned all the lessons. Don't make any mistakes. Do exactly what I did. Or don't do nothing what I did because I was wrong. That's like unfair, right? And that's what's turning everyone away from conservatism and religion because a lot of women and men, we had, they had their past, right? And then we get to this point where we're just like, well, I'm better now. I'm not going to do those things I used to do because I'm better. And then a young guy's like, hey, can I date and have fun and do these things? And we're like, no, you're going to have to be a mentor, be perfect and be disciplined and never make mistakes. You got to be like how I am now. And that's a little unfair. I'm not saying tell them, hey, go do something stupid like drink and drive or get a girl pregnant or something like that. But tell them, hey, just like don't go to jail. That's the number one thing because you go to jail, ruin your life. Um, and don't get a girl pregnant, you know. And the rest of the stuff is like you need to figure this out for yourself because if you don't figure out it for yourself, you will end up pedestalizing a guru because you didn't take the time out to figure life yourself. You know, mm. you were too scared living behind your mommy's safety net. To go out and experience and that happened to me right where i got to my mid-20s and that's when i finally like i was in the military traveling the world and i started realizing oh this is the way the world works why didn't i learn this sooner and it was because i let other people who had already lived their life tell me exactly how to live my life and i'm like different time different country different environment and it, it was really hard for me to finally grasp reality because i was relying on other people's version of reality not mine and that's a big gaslighting we do for young men we tell them, hey, this is the way reality is. We will tell you, we will dictate to you what is happening. And then they blame the red pill because red pill doesn't say, hey, this is what reality is. Red pill says, hey, what is it that you want? Okay, here are the tools to get what you want. Have a nice day. Leave us alone. So, yeah. yeah. That brings me to my next question. How should one pedestalize themselves or what steps should a guy take to start pedestalizing themselves? I can start with a good example. Um, this was inner game July of 21. Or, yeah, 21. And it was after the whole cheating thing happened with my ex. And that's when I was starting to do the workout and stuff. And she just had one of those old meltdowns because of her little narcissistic mind why I was doing all this stuff. And I, that's when I actually probably stopped pedestalizing her as much. I'm like, I'm doing this for myself. I want to be better at this, this, and this for myself. And it kind of drove her nuts because I was starting to work out. I was eating right. I was reading books and all this stuff. So I think that's where it starts. And you cannot have good operating frame or be able to play dread as well until you start pedestalizing yourself and respecting yourself and putting yourself as the prize. Oh, that's a good one. 
I, I figured it out when uh, once I realized that nobody gives a shit about me. And, and what I mean by that is it's, it's not like, oh, my parents don't care about me or my family doesn't. No, it's out in the world as you operate. Nobody gives a shit about you. So stop being e egotistical and thinking that they give a shit about you because they don't. All they care about is themselves. So you're going to piss off 50% of the entire population you run into throughout your entire life. So if you're just going to piss off half of everyone anyway, you may as what you may as well do what's best for you. You'll just piss off a certain 50%. Why waste your life trying to appease other people when you should make yourself healthy and make yourself happy and make yourself wealthy? That's yeah. when I figured it out. Well, that's a good point. You know, that's, definitely know what's coming to rescue. And when you do start to acquire that identity and you pedestalize somebody, you know, you're looking to them for all of your needs. And that's that's a bad place to be. You're expecting them to fill that spot and they don't really give a crap about you. That's that's reality. I mean, they do to the extent that maybe you're you have some sort of value exchange, but uh, it is an uneven value exchange. So getting back to, you know, how do I create how do I pedestalize myself? You have to change your mentality on how you look at yourself almost in a spirit. I don't want to say in an egotistical, arrogant way, but in a confident, um, confident, respectful way as whereas, you know, you know, you dominate the spaces that you enter because of your work, your inner work that you've done on your identity, yourself, and the use of your mentors to actually shortcut these things in life so that you can be the person you want to be much quicker than any other time in life. So that's one I think that pedestalizing yourself involves something like that. And it is going to require you to delve into your ego. And that's part of identity. Um, there's certainly a good book that tells you how to do that. So put it in I think, the uh, hardship is really needed and yep. everyone gets hardship. It falls into our laps, right? Bad things happen. However, I don't think that most people, maybe men that we're referring to pedestalizing are able to, scar up their wounds right they never actually solve it they just keep putting band-aids on and it festers and they have these wounds walking around some of those wounds can come out in forms of anger resentment or the opposite pedestalizing either way it's a frame issue and i think that i know glenn and i have talked about this but sort of ritual to manhood or at least pathway is not just going through the hardship but actually making it through stronger using that hardship to fuel you i don't think there is any shortcut to it i don't think it's fun it's not nice but it's what's needed for true growth i think there can be maybe not a shortcut but a a way to get through it and achieve those in a in a manner that's been forgotten and that's rites of passage if you can get those early on that will place you in a position and i won't go into the details but i think you probably understand BO, that that's a crucial part that's been missing for a long time right yep that's it nuke you got anything on how to pedestalize yourself uh the first thing you gotta ask and this is the scariest question for every man to answer is like what do you want mm, some yeah. stone for you right there yeah. well what every man like you gotta know what you want like the like world will tell you what you want if you don't know the answer and that sucks right you'll like there's guys that do everything right they go to college and they marry their college sweetheart and all that and then they finally get to their 40s they have their midlife crisis and they, the midlife crisis isn't like some childish thing where like they want to relive their youth it's basically saying wait i could have done anything i wanted my whole life and i chose this and now i have the the resources and everything to, to do whatever i want but now i realize like i i did the playbook and i'm not you know fulfilled right mm -hmm. so knowing what you want is going to depedestalize everyone right because like i said earlier when you're in your 20s it's a war for your mind your soul and your allegiance to whatever ideology person and all that stuff like like for example uh it wasn't it, there is no morality in trying to tell men not to follow andrew tate right because there are worse people out there that are getting attention and all that right um the morality was i want those young boys to be on my side not andrew tate's side right? I yeah. want their soul for me. It's it's nothing to do with morality, right? So if we if we individually sat down with those boys and said, when I say boys, I mean 18 to 30, right? The, the target audience. And we said, hey, dude, what do you want? Well, I want to have, you know, a Bugatti and be rich. I'm like, okay, are you sure? 
because you know, like, what do you mean? Like, have you met a guy that's making six figures, is living a private life, and you know, has women and all that stuff? No. Okay. Well, here, here's how my life is. Is this better for you instead of being an internet celebrity and and going to jail and and you know all that stuff? Uh, yeah, actually, it is. And I'm like, okay. Well, what you want is, is being told, dictated to you by someone else, right? And don't get me wrong. I love fast cars and I love hot women. We're all men. We all love that stuff, right? But deep down, what you want is the most important question because you can't. If if you don't know what you want, someone else will figure it out for you. Oh, let me jump in there, Nuke. That's so important, especially when you bring up someone like Andrew Tate that's controversial. And that one side really wants to paint him as dangerous. Dangerous. You're giving this false image. He says some things that cut through to the heart of the matter for every single man, and you can't deny it. That doesn't mean his whole as an entirety is not human and flawed. Let me just go ahead and give the one quote that every man will strike here or will understand here that if you understand this early on, this is important. You just talked about the battle for your soul, your mind, your intellect. Here's his quote, resist the slave mind. Mm. Understand what that actually means. Everybody wants something from you and they don't care about you. Yep. You can look around and see it everywhere. That is what he refers to as the matrix. That's been around since time immemorial, since the allegory cave, right? You guys remember the allegory of the yes. cave yes. where they're all sitting in the cave in ancient Greece and there's a fire and they're all sitting there watching the shadows, imagining oh, Plato's, uh, Plato's cave or something like that. Exactly. Yeah. One guy leaves and comes back and tells them all, guys, you realize it's just a fire outside and people are making little funny noises. And they said, no, you're interrupting our life. We will kill you. And they killed him for it. That's the cave. Mm -hmm. So I think it really helps you to understand not to pedestalize when you realize that you can res resist that slave mind and make your own decisions. So I just want to bring it up because Nuke, you really struck it, it figured in my mind what you were saying about that battle. That is the big battle right there for young men. Yeah, it's not, like, it's not even just not protecting for young men. You from, yeah, they're not protecting you from Andrew Tate. Yeah, they want you men. for themselves. Yeah, they want you for yeah. themselves. All men, Glenn, yeah. yeah it's it's but, for but, all men because what, what tends to happen is that like, okay, so let's say you, you did adopt this worldview or this mindset that some guru gave you, right? Oh, shit. And now that's your mindset. But when that collapses, now you're in your mid-20s. You're, you know, maybe you're in your early 30s. And now your your worldview collapses, and now you're trying to scramble and trying to grab onto anything that that you can hold on to that sounds right. And so then, what a lot of these guys do is they find themselves looking for help because what they believe to be true and what their foundation was or the worldview was based upon crumbles underneath them. They feel like their whole life has been a lie. So it's not just for young men. Young men are the most impressionable, but. Guys in their 30s and 40s will also, when when the world comes crashing down, will be faced with the same dilemma. I'll see this with people in their 70s and stuff like that. Yeah, with, with identity politics. This like going back to what uh, what Nuke was saying too. You know about what do you want? That's one of the reasons why I'm a big proponent of law of attraction, right? Whether you believe in the woo woo stuff or not, the big question that that asks is what do you want, right? And it's all about you know, getting what you want out of this life. And a lot of people will tell you, oh, you should want this because it benefits society. You should do this because it's good for the Republicans or whatever. It's You should do this because it's good for social norms or whatever. It's like, if you think about it, if you stop and think about all the stuff that people are telling you, you should do for all these, for the greater good, the greater good. It, it's like, how does that benefit you? at the end yeah. of the day, you know, and a lot of people are controlled that, and that's how, that's how society controls you, you know, with your emotions, emotionalism and, and through identity politics. Cause that now you're like, you start taking sides with things. You're like, Oh, I'm on team this. So now I have to believe this. It's like, well, do you have to believe that? You know, like <laughs> whatever it is that they're trying to tell you. Um, most people just don't think for themselves that way. And they think with the, with the, with the hive mind, because they allow themselves to get to the point where they're controlled, you know? Yeah. But that's how you build frame on that. about the greater good. You got to think about what can you do for yourself? Are you able to save yourself? You have to put the life preserver around yourself before you think about helping anybody else out. Mm -hmm. And if you know that that's, that's step one, you can't jump the steps and think like, Oh, I'm going to save the world, but you can't even save yourself. Your you gotta look at it too, like what's in it for me? 
You know, Let, it, let's it, look it's super selfish and people will shame you for being selfish, but you have to ask that, like, what's in it for me? And that's one of the que questions that you, you have to not worry about what other people think about that. And, oh, you're being selfish. Well, fuck you. Well, that's, that's how you pedestalize yourself. One of the you most, have to get to that, that place. One of some, one of the most important um, flexion points in a man's life is telling a woman to fuck off. That is amazing. That, that it's the scariest, most it's roller hard. coaster of emotions yeah, is to yeah. tell a woman to fuck. It could be the nicest woman, but telling a woman to fuck off is a very, very difficult thing to do because most guys are afraid of her emotions. She'll cry. She'll kick and scream. She'll talk, so talk to her mom about it. I'm like, so it, like, this is how you build frame is first knowing what you want. Right. And also when you build frame, Hey, everything outside of my worldview, I am the number, I am the first thought in my mind when, when I go about my life, whenever any problem is presented to me, what does this have to do with me and how how is this going to affect me oh it doesn't has nothing to do with me not my problem right so when when guys argue with women right about whatever like body count or the future of the nation or whatever think about it does her having sex with dudes affect you at all a at all no not really um does her saying something about you like all all men are trash i'm like yeah yeah i am trash what you you want to get together? We could go to a dumpster and hang out or whatever. Um, <laughs> you know, I love that. Right. But like you see how now that I have frame, it's now it's amused mastery. Now a girl, now people, people, anyone can tell me, hey, hey, Nuke, you're a piece of shit. I'm just like, yeah, I'm not a good man. I'm not a good man. So I, I can I'm free. There is nothing more free to tell to 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 break the expectation and tell people, hey, I'm not a good person. It, it may be true or not. I'm good to my family, my friends. And people I, I do business with, but I don't have to be good to you. I don't owe you shit. I am following the law. That's all I have to do. So yeah. So That's Paul, weird. you said uh, you know people ask or men asking what's in it for me, right? I think one of the problems we're having is people asking too much, and I'll, I'll say men in particular, what's in it for me today, rather than what's in it for me in the long term, right? And this is a distinction perhaps between instant gratification and the discipline needed to see long-term goals through, right? Because it doesn't feel good today to deny myself something that would feel good, even if the long-term goal, if I had not done that, would be better to get to that objective. Yeah, like for, I guess, for example, like, you know, smashing a whole bunch of 304s, right? And dedicating all your time to doing that and not about growing your business or leveling up in other areas, you give all your free time to just smashing 304s. That may benefit you in that short term. You may think it's beneficial, but in the long right. term, oh, it that's self-correcting, though. That's yeah. self-correcting. I can see that. That's kind of like, uh, you know, well, what's in it for me to eat this donut right now? Well, it feels good, but if I don't, uh, I'll look better later. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I can see that. <laughs> yeah, that's a self-correcting issue. If you do that, that's self-correcting. I mean, you don't have to cast any morals that way. It'll be self-correcting on its own. Real quick, guys, we got another super chat we haven't read yet. Mike, you want to take it? Rusty Fuel with the 999 super chat. <laughs> Thank you for the support, Rusty Fuel. And it looks like this bit of wisdom is going to come from Gandalf. Ooh. I advise the young men to follow the religious and conservative rules, not cheat them out of fun, but warn them of the real dangers and consequences of bad decisions. Oh, that was fantastic. That brings that me good. to something I would like to say in response, Mike. That was a great imitation. Here's my thoughts on uh, pedestalizing yourself. What it boils down to, guys, is ownership, self-ownership, of all your decisions and actions and then accountability to yourself. Mm -hmm. Now you can take that in a religious angle with the morals if you want, or if not, you can still maintain it. It is not required, but you need to have accountability. I know Glenn will agree with me on that. And then self-respect. And that, that is coupled with self-discipline. If you don't have self-discipline, how do you have any self-respect? You don't. So there you go. If you want to pedestalize yourself is make that, take that ownership, be respectful to yourself, create that discipline and uh, be responsible.
for your accountability for all the actions and decisions okay. you make. There is no, oh, well, she said this. Nope. Somehow I did something and she said this. And we're seeing On that play shit. out right now. We're seeing that play out right now with the, you know, certain podcasts that didn't pull out, you know, <laughs> and, 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 and fresh, you know, like, <laughs> well, it's a it's good because we all, we all, we all fall short, you know, like, yeah, we all don't want to hold account, be accountable. Not his yeah. swimmers. Nobody wants, short. nobody likes having to be accountable, you know, especially if it's a fuck mm. up. Yeah. Let's just be real. Nobody's like going, oh, please hold me accountable. Please do it. Can do I it. Say do it. If yeah, because you get you get punished. We don't yeah. like to get Nobody punished. likes it, but the reality is, you know, we ought to if we Look. want to grow. We ought to if we want to, you know, move yeah. forward in life. Yeah. It, it behooves okay. men especially to learn self accountability. Yep. Hold yourself yeah. accountable. That's mm. also a part of putting yourself on a on, yes. on the pedestal, right? You got to have your own sense of rules for yourself your own sense of um you, you know guidelines for yourself and um you know and you got to follow them and if you don't like it, it you got to hold yourself accountable for for doing that because no one else is going to and it's even oh, that's, worse. That's absolutely or, or true. when someone you know, does hold you accountable you're not going to fucking like it you, right? you like, gotta <laughs> do that you gotta do that because in just the circumstance we've heard in the space in just a few days if you if you're accountable and you followed your simple rules such as thor's savage math <laughs> you know, you know that's just a horrible is, math. You, horrible math. The truth, yeah, you would like never like actually math. have this issue because for savage math is look, look, girl, it goes like this: down the hatch or up the back. No problem. <laughs> for savage math, brought to you by RP Thor. <laughs> well, I, well, there's iron two rule side, number five. There's yeah. two sides to that, right? There's two sides, right? Because. There's one side of dudes, um, you know, I'm going to play both sides of this. Well, there's one side of dudes that could never have achieved, get a girl like that because they don't have game money or whatever, right? Couldn't and, afford her. Yeah, yeah, or couldn't afford her, right? <laughs> but, and then they are the one, they also bring down people that maybe they were pedestalizing before because not all pedestalization is positive. It could be negative too. You can yeah. pedestalize someone out of hate, right? I think pedestalization is all negative. Yeah, but like, like, like towards the person... You know, there's people you'd be like, wow, you're so amazing. Here's my money. And there's other people who are like, hey, I hate you. Here's my money as well. Right. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's how you too. Yeah. Are, are you talking uh, about your your reactions on X right now with all those? Uh, yeah. yeah. It's, that all, you're knocking down? <laughs> it's, it's all the same. But there's two there's two sides to this. Like there's the guys that are just like, I could never get a girl like that. Finally, this guy that I hate is getting his just desserts. He's a POS. Right. Me personally, I think it was very dumb. You know, he failed so many RP things that we the jumbotron test control the birth you name it right but personally too as a young guy i've i've been in a situation where you get a girl that's very attractive she she has your her hands on your on your chest she's in a, in a foreign accent saying to take it off i want to feel you you're you're tipsy you're half drunk you're just like shit oh well, the rule book goes right out the window you cannot say you're a disciplined human being if your discipline does not get tested, right? So yep. that side, yep. I don't care what they have to say, right? I'm not, mm. I don't know uh, Walter and I don't, you know, I don't, you know, I, I do my thing. I don't care. You know, this is his life, right? He'll be fine. The girl will be fine. But on the other side of that, right, what's, what the sucks about this kind of accountability is that he preaches the stuff of the rules that he's breaking. See, so here's yeah, the other that's thing. That's my biggest problem. My so biggest here, problem with it. About hold this, on, though. hold on, Glenn. That's my biggest problem. Absolutely. The fact that he preaches being like, you know, a Bible guy and does no, everything doesn't. that way. No. Yes. Well, no, he said he has the, no. the background of that. He doesn't say he's yeah. a practicing. I'm a man of God. He, he said, said that last times. night that they don't, that they talk about getting laid and stuff. They're not necessarily out there practicing being trad. I, I never watched their show unless something special comes up. Like hey, that. and I, I to be <laughs> fair, to be fair, I do stuff that's non RP, right? Like I do stuff and I look back and I'm like, yeah, that was kind of dumb. Right. But at the same time, I mitigate like the big things, the things that could ruin my life. I, I take very, very seriously, not because, um, of my brand is for me, because if I screw we, up, you know, I could be get a oh, lot. I've of actually met him a few times. Yeah, I've met him too. And like, again, like, so like, okay, let me explain this. And this is how I see it. Um, when it comes to accountability, the only people that really matter when it comes to accountability are the people that you value a relationship with. 
Yes. You know, like Correct. every Spurg and every hater on the internet or every fanboy or any person that has a voice on there, we all have opinions. We all may want to give him his comeuppance, right? But who the fuck are we? We're nothing to him. So us trying to hold him accountable is just like trying to hold the 304 that you can't fuck accountable. <laughs> all right. Yep. Like, it it the means nothing. Back to the whole nothing. Crystallize yourself. It's when you have those interactions, say, on X or even in person, they have all these things about you. It's like, who the fuck are you? Why should I care? That's now, did he, did he Did he screw up? Absolutely. I just, I've done two videos on this. I'm One's uploading right now where I break down the whole thing of uh, the video yesterday. And at the end of the day, what it comes down to it is he admits that he fucked up. He said it in the video. Um, but, you know, reality is he's going to be accountable for it. And he has to be accountable for it. And he's going to, regardless, as men, we don't get to not be accountable for it. Mm -hmm. Right. But is, Glenn, you're... isn't this very, very contrived? I mean, let's just go way out on a limb here. This yeah. seems almost planned. Do you think maybe there was more than one swimmer? Regardless of the fact I that, mean, like, it, he, the fact that he put himself oh, in that situation. All right. To... That's what I'm saying is, yeah, when you're playing that dangerous game with someone like that, look at the Instagram. I mean, I'm sure you'll break it down. This is the game you play, this is part of it. I say oh, the kayfabe, the kayfabe, yeah. That's part of it, right. They're going to get, they're gonna to get the, the just desserts. You know, if they're going to preach something and then not follow their own prescriptions, boom, what do you know? Yeah. I don't necessarily yeah. see it that way. I see as him as he's in, he is putting out the best information he can, having actually met him, yet he is willing to dive into the game and test it. And yeah. so I don't see it the way any of you do in that way because I've met him on multiple occasions. Mm -hmm. And that's probably because I've had that interaction, which mm -hmm. you guys can't have just looking at his show. Yeah. Question yeah. is, how many guys I, I have, have say, you guys ever gave say... advice to somebody and then also not taking your own advice? Of course. Of course. So yeah. we're, we're human. We're gonna fuck yeah. up. The the problem the problem is about uh this situation is first, like hey, like everyone is like morally grandstanding, right? Um, this, this is like, hey, he got a chick pregnant. I mean, a lot of us were probably accidents too. It happens great, absolutely. Right? Yeah, it happens. Like, like I, I empathize because I have been in situations where women that were my type that were like very, very attractive with foreign accents and they were, you know, not to get too crass or, or graphic. They were on top of me speaking to me in Spanish or whatever. And they're saying, please take I it off. Me. Exactly. And yeah. that's and like as a guy who's never had that, you can't say you can't crap on a guy that who, who has to deal with that on a regular basis. Right. Once you get clout and fame, women will come out of nowhere and they will try you know, to do the thing, right? Women are good at pretending they like you, right? And as a guy who with, with, with status, you are entitled and have the right to go use that status to have fun. I, I personally, one day, if I ever have status, I would like to go out and use it to have fun myself, right? Like that's, but at the same time, there, I don't look at it from a moral who's right or wrong. The problem is it's a lesson. And the lesson is if you're going to have a platform Right. You're going to have to be ready. If this is real, you know, it could yeah. be contrived. You're going to have to be ready, not, not accountable to your your co-host or the, your employees, which, which yeah. probably will suffer because you'll probably get less money or whatever economic, you know, okay. um, you're going to have to be accountable to these losers and these angry people and these moralists that don't even like you because now you have you have image. And that's the problem here. It's the image thing. Right. If you're a nobody like me and I, if this happened to me, no one would care. I, they'd be like, "Oh, that sucks, dude." My my brother and my dad would be like, laugh at me and be like, "Well, we'll be we'll be at the baby shower, and <laughs> I'll move on. I, I, we'll move on with their life, right?" Here's your but cigar. If, yeah, if you if you are famous in in any you know niche, and this happens to you, the the shitty part isn't accountable to your family, your friends, or yourself. It's accountable to people you don't even know who don't who who who've given you money in the past or hate you or write articles about you. That's the part that's going to drive you insane, right? And that's why I feel sorry for him because I've been there. I've been in a, in a situation where it's like, shit, I I get it. Like, I, you, you know, I get it. It's not, it's stupid, but I get it. You know, I, I empathize, right? However, at the same time, dude, like this takes discipline, right? To, to be a public, you, you need, you needed to be more careful, right? You need, because, because me, if I get a girl pregnant, nothing in my life changes. I just got to pay child support or something, right? But if you get a girl pregnant, you your brand, your business, your what feeds you can go down the gutter. Not saying that it's real or not, and I hope it's not real, but yeah. 
And see, here's the thing, you know, anybody going to be a teacher or an, uh, um, an influencer of whatever sort knows that, look, come, what comes with that cost is the weight of accountability. Like you're going to be the one, if you fuck up there, you're, you're going to be held to the task. You're going to be tarred and feathered and you have to be okay with it because you put yourself in that position. You want to reap the benefits of being that person then guess what? You also gain the consequences when you fail as that person. And, you know, that's with, just part wait, of the wait, game. wait, hold on. Glenn, what was that from Spider Man? With great power comes great responsibility. Yeah. And, you know, it, it, it's, it's not fun. Nobody likes it, but it's part of the game. It's part, it comes with the territory. And, you know, if we want women to be accountable, we got to be at least the ones that set the damn standards of it, you know, like whether we like it or not. If we're going to be having shows, if your show's going to be around, you know, calling women out for their bad behavior and calling them 304s, whatever, and just saying they're unmarriageable, then fine. If you're holding them accountable, then when the when it comes back around on you, make sure you're ready to embrace that accountability, because if not, then you just you're you are you're uh, tainting your own brand. I like what Glenn just said because I agree with one. And there was another tack. I want you guys to imagine. I'm not saying this should be done, but there's another way to handle this if you're in that situation. You know you're with this gal. You know she's an Instagram model. You know there's a possibility that she you're playing the game, right? So you're playing the game and you do the mess up, right? She knows you don't want the kids. All of that. Rather than spending an hour on the phone with this gal explaining all the silliness around it, had you had the frame from the beginning and the directness, the answer is going to be pretty simple. Well, you know, I didn't want to have kids. So keep me informed of the birth, and then we will certainly have a paternity test, and I'll do my part. See ya. Jumbotron test. It should have been all yeah. in person. That would have been the only thing that happened, and I can almost guarantee you what's going to happen. Yeah, By Holding that himself accountable to self-discipline in that way, and being a game player, it's likely that would not conclude in that fashion. Oh, yeah, all you had to really say is like, yo, you know what? You know, I don't want kids, but if you end up keeping it, I will do what I need to do. That with I, the paternity know. test. Yeah, with the paternity test, yes. of course. That's Absolutely. walking the walk. Yeah. Yeah. Like once, um, that's also, it. Also, if doing everything right does not mean either that you, you you're gonna have like this easy, perfect image too. Because you know, however you guys feel about them. Like uh, on the other side, who uh, Fresh and Fit's mentor, which is uh, Rolo, um, he is married for 28 years and he does, you know, he, he lives the life, you know, he's not cheating on his wife or anything like that. He's a pretty chill person, but he still gets shit on all, all the time, too. So it doesn't yeah. matter what you do. So at this point, it's like it's like I explained. Um, have you guys seen The Boys season two? Yeah. 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 Remember when in the season one they blackmailed Homelander and they said, if you if you keep fucking up, we'll show this video of you being an asshole to, to civilians. He was like, OK, I'll be good. And then season two, they kept threatening, threatening him with that. And he's like, if, if this leaks, there, I have nothing to lose. I'll destroy the country. Yep. I have nothing to lose. Exactly. Right. And that's what ends up happening to a lot of guys where um, they they do everything right and they. They marry the chick, they have the kids, and they do everything right. And they still, you know, they get to still get their lives destroyed. And they're like, "Wait, I had I had my wife's divorce and my my the court of public opinion and all these things against me, holding me in place. And I thought if I, you know, went by the rules, everything would turn out. And it didn't work that way. So now I don't give a shit anymore. I'm gonna bang hookers and 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 have three women at a time. I'm gonna do the drugs. I'm gonna." not give a fuck anymore and this is happening on a society-wide level right this is just like i personally would hate to be in a position where after working so hard i get completely destroyed by people i don't know because i made a mistake that every like a lot of people make a lot of people make however at the same time again it's you you have to practice what you preach you messed up you, you're gonna have to either go to an image coach and be like how do i save this Maybe go to your mentors like Thor and Rolo, you know, or anyone that in your circle. Hey, how do I fix this? Because now, now you got to do double the work. You may have to be a father now, and you may have to save your business because it, it's contingent on your image. So, just just do the work. You know, you know, if you put you find yourself in a situation where you drop the ball, okay, own it, do what you got to do. 
That's it. That's what men do. We just do what we ought to do. So, so. to Glenn's point, we all are going to have accountability at the end of the day. I know we said this a few minutes ago. And my big issue with Fresh at the moment, uh, just given this scenario, because I don't think very highly of him, period, in general, is that he has the accountability of what he did, what he allowed, how he led poorly. And now it seems he is fighting that accountability, a.k.a. being delusional, right? He has no problem calling 304s delusional. He has no problem asking for them to have more accountability. But now here he is. Oh, it's, it's, yeah, it's kind of my fault, but not my fault. I see it as he is a child. Well, he did, uh, to be fair, he did last night on the show. That. I'm going to disagree with you being actually Let, met him. While some of that may appear as such, I have more knowledge than that. Last, well, last has, night, hold on, guys. Last night on the show, he did say, I shouldn't have done that. Mm -hmm. Yep. But also, he was advised by uh, James Sexton to keep his fucking mouth shut. So he, he <laughs> exactly, he, he needs to keep yeah, his mouth shut. Yeah, I mean, I was, no comments. Last, no comments. I mean, the, the shitty thing about last night's stream was it was all about reframing, and I did not like it. It wasn't, there was really no um, ownership other than just trying to reframe, and that was the biggest yep. problem. You know, the problem wasn't the fact that he banged this chick without a rubber. It's the fact that, you know, he, he says he, he, he ca calls out women for abortions and, and stuff like that. And then, but then pushes for her to get an abortion. That, that was the fear biggest that problem. That. Yeah. There was fear that drove that, I'm sure. Yeah. You and know? I think yeah. maybe, maybe this is just, again, shock hit him. He didn't know what the fuck to say. And he, you Wanted know, to try to get out in front. And he just yeah. Like he, he, he stepped yeah. on his dick with his words. Maybe I, I, yeah, I look at the other side. <laughs> look at the other side. Like, why did she need to put this out publicly? Oh, because she Clout. needs to. She needs to get the upper hand from the uh, the well, yeah. sort of public opinion. It's all strat. It's all strategy and stuff yeah. like that. Yes, yeah, so I mean, that's, that's that's I mean, honestly, Huds, that part is irrelevant of the fact. Like, you you nutted in this chick without a condom. You know the risk of doing that, and now you might be facing the consequences of it. She's not going to want to get rid of the baby. Own up, do what you got to do, and yeah. that's it. That's part of the, that's part of the consequences. We got three cool. super chats to read, and I was gonna after that I was gonna go uh, final thoughts and where we can find you. Yeah, we gotta get back to this whole. We've been going for an hour thing. and a half, so let's, uh, let's <laughs> no, go gonna, three super right. chats. Rusty fuel with the dollar ninety nine, very topical. Thank you, Rusty, for the support. Um, I assume you mean not, uh, but I'm going to read it literally. <laughs> you don't get to nut be accountable. Uh, or perhaps you're going for a pun there. You're absolutely right. Uh, as a man, you're always accountable, so you may as well do the best thing that's going to lead to the best outcome for you or be what's morally right in your own personal convictions. Uh, Rusty Fuel again with the 499 Super Chat. Okay. Thank you very much again, Rusty. The real world will eventually hold you accountable. Yeah. Oh, no, wait. I, I read that wrong. I read that wrong. Guys, <laughs> the real world, it will eventually hold you accountable. There's nothing you can do about it. Doesn't matter. And so right here, it looks like we have a disagreement. I will personally address this one. Thank you, No Link, for the $5 Super Chat support. We read all Super Chat even disagreements. Fresh and fish. <laughs> fresh, <laughs> fresh, and f fresh and fit has done no more, has done more for 304s than guys. Oh, my God. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Are you counting that promotion of their OnlyFans? I guess yeah, yeah, cool. they have helped with the OnlyFans promotion. Yeah, uh, I never yeah, thought yeah. about that. Yeah, I mean, come, <laughs> come on, right? But like, are you guys serious? But I disagree because, as someone who has personally benefited from Fresh and Fit, Fit Fresh and Fit's coaching, uh, I also have a speech issue. Uh, my finances have leveled up. My game has leveled up. I have interacted with them personally on multiple occasions. Uh, they have dramatically improved my life. And I am just one man. So 
I disagree with you there, but we appreciate the support nonetheless. And, and the final super more. chat for the day. It didn't work. Siege D with the 499. Thank you very much for the support, Siege D. The Savos, Savo Streams, are back tonight. Rocky Savo and RP Shove discussing the Diddy stuff. Then we have Glenn's one on one with Sarah and Raging Tomato or Tomato or I don't know who that person is. <laughs> She's in the chat. Don't worry. She'll let herself oh. be known. Okay. I well, can thank see you, that. for the support. All righty. So let's go around the table. Final thoughts on where you can find you. Let's start with uh, Mr. Based Oracle. Thank you for joining us today. Yeah. Thank you all for having me. I enjoyed the conversation. I'd be happy to do it again if you have me back. And um, as far as what do I have to conclude with, I think I said just about everything I had to. Uh, if you want to find me, you'll find me. That's my plug. <laughs> uh, thanks, my friend. Nice. Thank, thank you. you. Follow the trail of trolls. Yeah, yeah, that's that's uh, yeah. They're my best. They're my super fans. So, hey, they keep them famous. Huds. Yeah. So, final thoughts on it. Um, we pedestalize others uh, because they are representing essentially a, a piece of ourselves that we don't have. And so, when we truly live and love ourselves, then. Once we move past a certain uh, certain level of that, then we can give back to others, and so that's just something that I've kind of been kind of been thinking about. That until you are confident and you have that identity of yourself, then you you won't be able to uh, you won't be able to do that appropriately. I don't know if my words are making sense right there. Um, this is a deeper thought that I'm probably going to like write out about, or maybe even do a video on. Uh, but it's it just interesting thought process. Um, so outside of that, um, you can find me at the Hudsman on Instagram. Um, also the Hudsman on YouTube. Um, if you need any dating advice whatsoever, more than happy to help. Even a couple free questions for free. Um, or even just from the Instagram, you can go ahead and schedule a consult with me. That's all I got. Awesome. Thanks Thank for you, your good man. work today, Huds. Absolutely. What you did this week. Thanks. Let's go to Glenn next. Um, what do I got going on? Okay, final thoughts. Um, you guys, one way to to not have like pedestalizing people is become competitive. When you see somebody that is better than you, get competitive with them. Just like you know what, I want to do what they're doing, but better. Like, and then put in the work. When you when you get competitive, and you're like, I could do that too. I, I watch me hold my beer. You know, that's when you start leveling up. That's when you start fighting for it. It's when you start putting in the work because now you're motivated. You want to outshine them. You want to prove to yourself that you could outshine them. All right. That's one way not to pedestalize people. Now, in doing so, also remember that it's the you're inspired by other people. We are all inspired by things around us, things that we see. We are inspired by, and, and it's a, it's okay to be inspired by things, but don't worship things like that. Okay. You may be inspired by Andrew Tate's Bugatti. That's nice. You want a Bugatti? That's great. I don't like small things. I don't like small cars at all. I like big trucks. So, you know, big trucks and Harley Davidson's. That's all I like to ride. You like big butts? Th those are, those are, I like big butts too. Flies. And I cannot lie. Those other brothers <laughs> can't deny. Oh, damn. Dang but, um, <laughs> you know, don't worship, don't make gods out of mere men. And that's that's the main thing. You what know? about a just slightly below average god? About slightly it? below average gods are cool because they're like, you know, just a little sub far above human. You know, they cool. All right. Nuke, what do you got going on? Final thoughts and any more women you're going to knock off the pedestal? Uh, <laughs> final thoughts. Know what you want. Um it's literally that's where your frame. You can't have frame if you don't if you're living off someone else's uh kind of what they want for you, right? You have to know what you want, and you'll be shocked to know what you want uh, as you go through life. You'll you'll realize, wait, this thing that everyone wanted me to do, and it was safe for me because I didn't have to think about what I wanted, is actually not what I want. 
So the end game of that is you start penalizing people that do get what you want because you never had the balls to go get what you want. Um, what I'm working on uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 7 p.m. Central my show is my show. You come in and chat. I have a summer pool guide coming on my Patreon. I already typed. Uh, there's an article on it, but also I'm going to do a video seminar and uh, to set up guys for the summer for pool season so they can uh, meet some ladies. So, yeah, that's all I have going on. Awesome. Wow. I love like, it. Nuke, it's fantastic because I, you're cracking me up on the damn Twitter, man. I can't wait to see what you're doing. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm surprised I still have a Twitter, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mike Steele, what's going on in Vegas? And any final thoughts on this? I do have th final thoughts. Uh, first of all, uh, socials are down there. I, I can't stand this mirroring effect. Right there, I got the IG and I got the X. IG is a place of uh, uplifting uh, things like uh, smiles and food and beautiful women. The X, that's where I raw dog the internet is on X. <laughs> if you want the spicy <laughs> shit, follow me on X. Yeah. Guys, here's the way I see it. You should be so busy building your own shit you don't have time to put anyone on pedestals damn men right. women celebrities coaches doesn't Nuke. doesn't matter you should be so busy you don't have time you got money to make you got muscles to build you got cars to fix so that you don't have to pay some mechanic twelve hundred dollars to do it for you you got shit to do if you have time to pedestalize someone that's a time slot you could have filled with five more reps or meal prep for the next week, or something else, making eight more bucks. So don't waste your time pedestalizing. Be busy. That's all I got to say. Ooh, I like that, Mike. That was mm -hmm. good. That was good. Paul? Yeah, so there's this term in, in M NLP that we use called modeling, right? Uh, it's not a bad thing to model someone's behavior that's doing what you want to do. Right. If you're you want to be like Andrew Tate and, and drive Bugattis and, and have camera girls, then, yeah, model his behavior because that's going to get you there faster. Right. But you don't pedestalize them. Don't don't put them in such reverence of, you know, this authority in your life that you're basically worshiping them. That's 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 the difference there when it comes to women. Um, one of the re one of the big reasons why I, I put out the posts like having, uh, you know, calling uh, Scarlett Johansson a mid is mentally it's actually not a bad idea to treat all women like they're mids treat all women the same because a lot of guys, they do look at beautiful women and they, they put them above themselves they, they, they start becoming needy and simpy and that's just unattractive behavior. But if you treat the hot ones, like you treat the ugly ones, the hot ones are going to go, what's up with this guy? He's, he, he's not, he's not fawning all over me. Like 97% of these other guys out there, you're actually setting yourself apart and you'll actually be better with women when you start treating them like they're normal fucking human beings. And one of the things that uh, a lot of the women were complaining about and pointing out, and we're actually proving my point is even if you take the hottest girl in the world and you look at her closely, they're going to have flaws too. They're going to have flaws. So they're like, oh, look, this is what a normal woman looks like. Yeah, exactly. They're all mids. That's all I got, guys. Um, do uh, turn to the podcast Monday. My guest is someone you may have heard of. He's kind of a big name in the space. One might call him the world's best red pill couch. His name is Ryan Stone. He's going to be gracing our presence on Monday. And then get a copy of my book. It's available on Amazon, but the special edition is no longer available on Amazon and there's only three copies left, and you can only get them on Gumroad. I'll drop a link there. Um, and once they're gone, they're gone. I'm not ordering anymore. Awesome. I'll go, and then I'll turn it over to Thor to end the show with. So final thoughts on this? I honestly believe, after reading Ryan's work and going through coaching, you cannot have uh, like you cannot have frame or dread until you start pedestalizing yourself and start doing the things that you need to do to put yourself at a higher level. Um, with that, uh, still trying to figure out how I want to do the live stream review of Ryan's first book or of the first book of that series uh, frame. 
Uh, I want to make it good because Ryan does make me nervous. I'm not going to lie right there. So maybe I'm pedestalizing him a little. Don't bit. worry. He's not going to watch it anyway. Uh, yeah, he's not going to watch it. <laughs> um, and then, right. uh, such an asshole. Hey, probably he's not. I, I, I told Cappy about his, and he, he kind of ignored me. So no, Ryan just doesn't watch Red Pill content. Yep. You know, he, yeah. sure. It's, it's I, not I, good. It's I not good to watch too much of this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I'm um, with it. So, Except my buddies. <laughs> once I get that uh, out of my head and actually go through with it, it's actually – I'm going to up my production a little bit on that specific uh, review. Uh, but then tune in Wednesday night on Masculine Geeks channel. We will be doing the Drew Bay campaign if nobody calls out sick again. Uh, with that, i turn it over to Thor. Well, great, great hosting, great topic. And AJ, I see your cut, your Drakkar cut. And I keep saying his seer on there. For those that don't know, that means he's a general with the Drakkar. So he has rank. And we will be having a Dragons meeting next week. If you're interested in that, you can certainly find out how to join the Dragons meeting on becomedurable.com, which is posted right here behind me, which is a monthly two-hour meeting of the Dragons membership, monthly. That's a great place to go and encourage men to engage in brotherhood and lifting that tide with everybody in it. Now, I want to say a couple of things about the topic. I absolutely love it. But um, how do people get better in life. They must imitate. Human beings are the greatest imitators there are out there. I like what Paul said about modeling. It's crucial. How do I learn how to use my body language? How do I learn to project my confidence? How do I create values in my life, whether they're moral values or not, or just practical values? I have to imitate somebody I see. This is how children learn. We do this through our whole life. And that's part of us becoming men. And it is not pedestalizing. Pedestalizing goes way beyond. Pedestalizing pushes into obsession. And it's bad for both parties because it's a two-way street. One always gets value, more value than the other one, and is not aware of it. So when you turn that back in, you'll see this exercise of pedestalize yourself is truly a ongoing script of identity and how to become a better self that never ends. That journey never ends. It's always, always ongoing. And that's a good thing for us because as human beings, we need that stimulation. So you want to know more about that? There's four chapters in here about it. Take a look at it. I'm going to post into the chat right now a few things that uh, would help you. You can get my book on Audible or you can go learn how to become a power lineman. Where do I start? I start making two to three hundred grand a year after your apprenticeship. It's a kind of a shortcut on where do I go to try to find out about an actual labor skill that can pay me a lot of money. And, uh, of course, I also put in, uh, based on our earlier Rule Zero conversation, is how to cure a dead bedroom. There is many decades of experience there from the Married Red Pill. And I will shout out Ryan's book on dread. There's a lot that's been summarized in the easy steps there in a video lecture. That's really all I got, guys. The Dragon Ship is an amazing thing. I appreciate every man that was here. Thank you for our guest, B.O. And uh, that's all I got. So I can, you want me to take us out there? Yes, go ahead. That's why I ended with you, so you can take us out. <laughs> okay. We will go ahead and take us out. Right. Bear with, guys. Bear with, bear with. Good show, gentlemen. Good show. Well, AJ, if you got it, maybe, maybe you can... My screen's locked up. Um, which one do we usually end with? Just end with the ad. That'll be fine. Masculinity is in crisis. What are we to do? We need to acquire a dominant masculine presence. Now available on Amazon. Masculinity is in crisis. Men's masculine behaviors and traits have been suppressed by popular culture. Why has it become so popular to shame, guilt, insult, masculinity, and masculine behaviors? After 50 to 70 years of this has resulted in a very large subset of men who have become weak, useless, and crisis. Pathetic state for boys and men that leads to depression and violent despair. A dominant masculine presence addresses this very dilemma for the individual man and it firmly establishes why this is what is desperately needed by the individual man today. In this book, clearly defined masculine traits and behaviors and the emotional durability provided by traditional masculinity are presented as a guide to what every man should embed into his identity. Putting these principles and behaviors into practice will motivate and direct your path step to step to create for yourself an authentic dominant 